Hey guys, it's Alex and welcome to the Geeks Table. If you're watching this, you're probably one of the fans of two iconic phones from Nokia. The Nokia PureView 808 and Nokia Lumia 1020. And I'm sure you're keen to see how they stand against the latest flagship from Samsung, the Galaxy S22 Ultra. But for those of you who has no idea what are these phones about, let me do a small introduction. The first one is Nokia 808 PureView. It's the last phone on Symbian OS, and back in the day it blew up everyone's mind with its outstanding PureView sensor of 41 megapixel. It even has an ND filter built in, which none of the current phones have at all. The other one is Nokia Lumia 1020. It's a successor of 808, it runs Windows Phone 8.1, and also has a 41 megapixel sensor. But more importantly, it can shoot RAW photos, and back then it was also something uncommon. The last but not least, we have the latest flagship from Samsung, the Galaxy S22 Ultra. It runs Android, has a bunch of cameras, but to keep it fair, we'll be using only the main one, and well, it has more megapixels than both other phones combined, so the compression is going to be quite fascinating. But first, I will give you an opportunity to guess which phone this or that shot belongs to. They all were made in auto mode and none was edited afterwards. And well, if you are not into guessing, feel free to use the chapter markers to skip it. But for the rest, let's start the slideshow.
So, was it an easy guess? Let me know down in the comments, because to me, sometimes it was really hard to tell which phone this or that photo belongs to. Now let's check some more photos. As I mentioned before, Nokia Lumia 808 has an ND filter, which can show up automatically or manually if the camera believes that it's too much light coming to the lens. It really makes sense on a sunny weather, but sometimes algorithms turn it on in a wrong place. And in this case, the pictures appear more green than they are in reality. Unfortunately, we can't really fix it because 808 shoots only the JPEG, which allows limited flexibility. But on the other hand, one could say that it's a special style of the camera and it makes it look unique. Also, sometimes this ND filter affects the saturation of the image, so the photo looks quite desaturated. So I had to either disable the ND filter and shoot once again, or simply increase the saturation in the camera settings. Sometimes it might even look okay until you see the other two cameras, but I also had some shots that I could barely call normal. So yeah, where new cameras just point and shoot, older cameras require multiple shots to get the best result. Speaking of multiple shots, there might be a situation when you are unsure what would be the best setting for that shot. Keep it as is or turn the exposure down a little bit. In this case, take it as a general rule to make a few photos for the best result. One could be with a normal exposure, but then the lights will be washed out and another one underexposed. So everything will be much darker, but the lights won't be clipped and you'll preserve their color. Lumia 1020 and Samsung S22 Ultra can shoot RAW photos and they contain more data to work with, so we may try to recover some of the data by playing with the settings. And sometimes it may be good enough. And let's talk about RAW a little bit more here. Shooting in RAW can be useful in such scenarios where you have both dark and bright parts of an image. Of course, HDR rules these days, it tries to keep the shadows brighter and highlights darker, but in the end we get a relatively flat and boring picture. In this case, we might want to play around with the image. I've noticed that raw photos from 1020 can look quite upset when I'm changing the exposure. But pulling the shadows down is much better. Also, I'm hiding some noise of the image. And also, we are quite limited in making the image brighter here. Samsung's RAW images are a little bit better in some cases. We can play with the exposure here and recover some parts of the shot, but still, I can't really say we have a lot of freedom. I would rather state it's a plan B in case you screwed up while shooting. But of course, it's nice to have a plan B. Since we're talking about huge sensors, we should also talk about the amount of details these sensors capture. All three offer a set of two modes, full-size image with those crazy 41 or 108 megapixels, or a compact one when those megapixels merge in a smart way. And when we go full-size and dare zooming in, we'll see how much details we can preserve. Samsung has the biggest sensor here, so it allows us to get even closer comparing to the other two, but in this mode Samsung cannot shoot RAW, and the Lumia 1020 can. So although you cannot zoom that much with Lumia, all your RAW photos will have that crazy amount of details. Speaking of details, S22 Ultra and the recent flagships are now able to focus on quite a short distance. When we try doing the portrait mode, it's quite easy to notice Samsung here. First of all, Nokia phones don't have this mode at all, so everything looks less appealing, but on the other hand, it's natural optics with no tricks. In the case of Samsung, there are a lot of algorithms underneath, and including the HDR and sharpening that makes the photos look more natural, I would say. Concluding my crazy experiment, I should say that there have been shots where I enjoyed Nokia 808 more than others. There were also shots where 1020 was the best to me. And of course, the Samsung S22 Ultra could beat them all from time to time as well. Of course, latest phones are fast, they can work in challenging environments, and the photos would look stunning, but sometimes it's really nice to go back to the roots, back to these Nokias that make me think, make me carefully set up the settings before pressing that shutter button. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you want to play around with the shots yourself, I'll post a link to them in the description. 
Also, let me know down in the comments if you wish to see the same competition but with the latest iPhone 13 Pro. I could do that for you with pleasure. It's been Alex and see you at the Geek's Table. Take care.